We're really lucky to have this opportunity to hear uh, Barrett Brown and Spencer Ackerman have a conversation. Um, both of them have uh, some interesting things to say. Uh, Spencer's a uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist for his work on uh, Edward Snowden's uh, leaks that he covered in The Guardian. And Barrett Brown is a journalist who, uh, because of his work, was imprisoned by the U.S. government for several years. And uh, I will let them describe um, what happened and why. And take it away, guys. Thanks. Now, do you think that there is space for a successor organization or movement uh, devoted to the original mission of WikiLeaks, uh, revealing government secrets, revealing corporate secrets to emerge? And is that something that has to do with uh, your project pursuance? Well, there's definitely, there's definitely space for a multitude of options. I mean, I think there should be several different groups, uh, you know, trying different things out, obviously with, within, a, within, a, within a safe comp, within a secure confines. When I say experimenting here, I mean, you know, just using different ways of disseminating it afterward, different ways of crowdsourced research of the material. Uh, absolutely. And, and pursuance will be useful for that, along with things like secure drop and whatever else. That, that will be a useful uh, structure in which to create new alternative leaking organizations. Uh, but I'm not going to, that's not something I'll be involved in personally. So Pursuance is your new project. Pursuance, yeah. Let's, let's take the remainder of the time before we open up to questions to talk about what that is, talk about its utility uh, to activists and to journalists. So Pursuance, uh, it's, it's the primitive version of Pursuance. Project PM was originally created to create this, this blogger cartel slash crowdsourced research group slash civic activist uh, sort of network, civic, you know, network. Uh, it's been refined since then over, you know, over nine to nine years, eight years, so, so first trying to do this. Obviously, I learned a great deal from working with Anonymous, from running Project PM, you know, the, the, not just the broad issues of, of, you know, mass collaboration, but some of the specific mundane little things that you can't, you can't really, you could never really uh, predict. You have to kind of be there to see what these, what these things are. Just the little day-to-day -day interactions, the, the inefficiencies, the, the dangers, et cetera. So now I'm obviously much better educated on those issues, and we, I've had a chance to work with uh, people with, uh, you know, vast expertise and, and, and just great understanding of things that I, that I don't have uh, and flesh this out into a much more refined uh, protocol. And so this is a framework whereby participants uh, will come into this, this online ecosystem. Uh, each, each of them will have the ability to create an entity called a pursuance. These are entities that can uh, grow, that are scalable, uh, they can be set up in, in infinite different ways. What is uh, a pursuant? A pursuance is an, is an entity. It's an entity, a civic entity within this system. So this system is, it, we call it, broadly we call this process democracy. Process democracy is a, sort of a silly term that I've had to coin uh, to contrast with institutional democracy. Institutional democracy, including the U.S., uh, every, every institutional democracy in the world, always starts with some somewhat arbitrary points of non-democratic uh, uh, organization. So when you have a constitutional convention, there's no way of doing that with some, or even have a vote, there's no way of doing that with, uh, with somebody at some point deciding what's going to be voted on and what are the, you know, protocols. Uh, here in the U.S., obviously, we do not have, you know, contrary to some of the rhetoric that, that a lot of our uh, major journalists are now adapting uh, in the face of the Trump administration, uh, we are not actually a universal democracy. I cannot vote, for instance. Uh, I was stripped of that right as a felon, as were several million others. Uh, you know, citizens can vote here uh, for the most part, unless they lose the right. Uh, but residents, all residents cannot vote. So we are already at a point, I, I hasten to mention this because it's, it's an important preamble to, to what I'm proposing, that, you know, let's not pretend that we have or that any nation has this absolute, this, this universal, ideological, wonderful implementation of, of, of governments. They do not. It is all somewhat, uh, it has edges. In, in each instance, including ours. So in process democracy, under pursuance, for instance, uh, as opposed to institutional, institutional democracy, allows individual participants to come together and build working relationships uh, with, with, you know, with their eyes open, you know, with entirely consent-based. Uh, someone who wants to create, who wants to go about something in a certain way can create a pursuance and say, look, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to try to do prison reform. Here's, here's the basic idea of what we're going to try to do. I'm creating these positions for uh, someone to come do PR, 
whatever. And then from there, these people who have come on can, can bring on uh, people procedurally and sort of self-organize as we grow. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will, uh, you know, delegate uh, agency uh, over the system in various complex ways. We'll experiment here and there. Uh, in some portions of the system, I'll be, I'll be, you know, uh, overseeing very carefully how people are structured and what the workflow is. In other cases, you guys can self-organize it. So you've that's invented it. Slack? No, no, uh, no. This is, uh, and that's something that we have some written materials. I think go up in the differences between Slack and us, uh, and that's why we've had a number of groups, uh, Slack groups, including journalists that are that are now going to move to pursuance because Slack does have a couple of uh, issues. One of which is is uh, that it does uh, retain. And this is one of those things that Steve Phillips, our lead developer, should, should probably be addressing because I, I tend to get these things wrong. But there are, there are problems with Slack security-wise, not huge problems, but problems that, that we will not face because we're going about it a different way in terms of security. Now, beyond that, uh, Slack does not allow you to do the things that you can do with Pursuance. Uh, Pursuance, fundamentally, is a single ecosystem. It's, it's uh, curated in the sense that it's not a content-neutral system where anyone can come in and use Slack or Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we are handpicking these. We have 2,000 applicants, individuals, and organizations who have signed up thus far. There'll be by the time we launch, there'll be several thousand more. When my book comes out in February, promoting this, obviously, we'll have a huge, you know, more attention on this and, and bringing more people. Blah blah. So we will be picking out people uh, from this pool, putting them in there. They will uh, invite other participants down the line. Participants will come in via that way. That's how, how it would grow. So there's an element of trust that's baked into it. Yes. And that, that leap, at first, it's very much in our hands. Like, we have to kind of, you know, since we're picking out the initial population, but obviously over time, we, that, we lose control of that. We have to kind of hope that, we, that the pool of people that we put in there and give these tools and allow to uh, decide who comes in, at, you know, over time, we have to do as good a job as possible. But, you know, even to the extent we get it kind of wrong, it's still a better pool to work with than, say, everyone, the, the pool of everyone in America, which... Uh, uh, has not been an effective uh, pool of, of operators, I think, in the last few years. I think it's has shown some deficiencies. Uh, so that's one, that's one thing that makes a difference. Another thing is the ability to build these visualized structures that are sort of like living organizational charts that can evolve over time, uh, that can sort of formalize working agreements while not uh, preventing you know, uh, a great deal of unique and sort of experimental growth within them. No one in this system is ever going to have to be working with people they don't want to work with. That's, that's, very, that's, that's unusual compared to, say, Occupy Wall Street or the anonymous IRC deals, things in which there was very little, very little membrane and very, very little uh, agency over one's ability to, to work, you know, to, to uh, decide who they're going to be with and who they're not going to be with. So one security uh, question that occurs to me hearing you describe this, what sort of user information are you as, you know, project pursuance going to be storing? No. Because okay, talk about yep. talk about that and talk about the value of that because it, it, it sounds like there's a tension there between what you're going to have to know about your users um, for right. the trust based element and what users can expect from a security so element. So from so from our, our role early on in, in uh, selecting users, it does not require doesn't even require you to have an email address. It doesn't require you to give us your real name. You just you'll basically and we'll, we'll announce the exact parameters. We have to send us a paragraph basically, and I'll at the right time we'll talk about what that paragraph is, but. And from that, we'll be, I mean, most people who apply of them this group will, will be getting in because the, we already, this is already a self-selecting sort of early adapter group that we're pretty comfortable with. We're not, we're not trying to, to micromanage, you know, what the population is going to be over time, but we, we, can, we can determine, and, and enough, of, enough people in this movement, like Virginia John's daughter, the Icelandic member of parliament, John Kiriakou, the mm -hmm. CI whistleblower, have agreed that this is a workable strategy to the extent that they've uh, become board, board, board members on our group. Uh, we, 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 can, we can expect that this will be, again, a, a group that, for the most part, will be, will be in favor of open societies broadly. We'll share a certain ideological framework uh, beyond, beyond, you know, uh, that will allow them to collaborate very effectively uh, using these tools. But if I'm H.B. Gary, what stops me, therefore, uh, from using a cutout to send you that paragraph Nothing. and infiltrate Nothing. it? Nothing. They can get into the system that way. Mm -hmm. And then they're in the system. But from there, as opposed to, say, Occupy Wall Street, which uh, Tom Ryan and Aaron Barters came up to and signed up for a, for, they came to the first day and signed up for a, a newsletter and forwarded it to the FBI. Or Anonymous, in which Aaron Barters walked in and, and along with all these FBI agents in our IRC infrastructure, message boards, Twitter, whatever, and just jotted it all down. Uh, in this case, unlike those cases, unlike every other instance of activism, they will face uh, several barriers uh, to uh, 
uh, being productive in, in, in their attempts to infiltrate things. So for one thing, so you're in the pursuance system, individual pursuances, particularly those that the uh, feds would be most interested in or the authoritarian governments elsewhere would be most interested in, uh, those will generally, they will have a lot of options to decide uh, what you have access to upon joining, if anything. You know, how much work you have to do to get closer to, uh, let's say, the, the, mem the, uh, the center of things. Just like old revolutionary groups back in the day, you used to have a cell system for that very reason. This is an old, old problem, obviously. Uh, and so we've given people, you know, look, most of the people using this pursuant system will not really need to worry much about the FBI. These, a lot of these are mundane groups like, you know, Bikes for Africa, you know, whatever. On, on the other hand, we used to think that groups like Stop the Chamber, uh, you know, would not be of interest to the FBI. So obviously we do encourage people to, uh, or, or a private contractor. So we, we encourage people to use, you know, to be conservative with this. Uh, but, but the point is, is that the, the way that we allow this customization to occur, the way that we allow this sort of self-evolution of these groups to occur, uh, allows for all these different ways uh, that are appropriate for the individual activity being done to prevent, uh, to, pre to deal with infiltration, again, on their own terms, to, to make it harder, to make it harder for someone to come in and within that same day start jotting things down and, and thwarting things. Uh, there will, we, there will never be a 100% solution to preventing infiltration, never. Mm -hmm. It's a cat and mouse game, it, it goes on forever. You know, it's, all we can do is respond to what we know, uh, you know collate that information, see what their, what their strategies are, and then try to give people the tools to handle those as they feel appropriate. And then uh, along the way, also try to educate them about, you know, about uh, the specifics of these things. What do you consider the measure of success for this project? I think uh, if about three years after launch, we have, let's say, 15,000 uh, people uh, using it uh, across the world, uh, East Africa, you know, dissidents from Eritrea, uh, which we already have interested, uh, Arab reformers, we already have interested. Our, our director of operations, Annalise Burkhardt here, uh, along with uh, Claire, and a few, Claire Peters, our uh, strategy director, and a few others, went to RightsCon a couple months ago, and they met with uh, a number of Arab, Arabic activists who were just telling us, look, as long as it's end-to-end -end encrypted and, and really secure and can be used to, like, to organize people, we don't care about these other features. We just need that now. Mm -hmm. It's life and death for these people. Back in the Tunisian Revolution, as I mentioned earlier, Facebook was being used by necessity. You can either choose between using Signal and Slack, whatever, and, and talking to people that you already know in a secure way, or you can go on Facebook and reach people, which they have to do, and they become vulnerable. We don't want anyone to have to face that decision ever again. So what we're offering is not a perfect solution, but for, for, for some constituencies in particular, particularly for those working on authoritarian regimes that are being actively hunted by both uh, government, government agents and federal contractors from the West who work for those governments, uh, this is a necessity. And for groups, for NGOs in the U.S. that uh, have less dramatic concerns, uh, that just want to uh, better, better, uh, better collaborate with other, other groups to, to find areas of shared resources, potential information sharing, strategy, et cetera, uh, it will also be useful. For individual activists who have no, who don't want to get involved in an actual institution, don't have a college degree, can't join the Peace Corps, which was my situation, when I, was why I couldn't join the Peace Corps myself, uh, but want to be active in, in, in taking their, their citizenship seriously, uh, this, is, this is a better solution for them. And these, a lot of this stuff is, is things I can't really, uh, I can't prove it here, audibly, you really have to look at our materials, but I, I'm, I am, uh, I'm confident that to the extent that anyone does look at, at our plan uh, as documented, uh, they will strive to it. They, they will find it to be useful and worth, worth doing. I have a lot more questions about that and other stuff, but the audience probably does uh, more than I do. So uh, can we open this up to some questions? About 20 minutes. Okay. I can't see.